Welcome to Morning Glory Farmstead. My name is Lolly, and this channel is all about gardening, animals, and nature. This is one of the benefits to unkept areas in your yard. <laughs> And here we've got the male gold finches. Now after feeding these birds for the last nine years, I can tell you hands down, they prefer the sunflowers without the shell. So if you've got the black oil sunflower seeds with the shell on, they may not eat those as readily as they would the ones that do not have the shell. And some of the smaller varieties of birds truly can't get the shell off. So having the ones without the shell is awesome. Now this is Rubos and Runner. They are brothers. They are my Easter Egger roosters. What are you doing, Rubos? Well, hey, Runner. <laughs> Dex is taking a nap on the catio. This is just some storage shelving that's kind of a plastic material and I put bath mats on it so they have something to lay on outside. Y'all, this time of year, there is just so much to share. Now, this is the bluebird nest that I showed you earlier, and it is empty. I just wanted to check it, but I wanted to also go check this one out because I have not looked in this one yet. So I'm going to check the side first, and then I will check the front. Did y'all see how that other one was built? They just build these nests way up with all kind of pine straw and stuff. You know, every kind of bird, well, not every kind, but a lot of birds build their nests differently from one another. All right, so we've got some birds in this one. I try to open it really gently. I don't want any birds falling out. I always do a little thump on it just to make sure the parents aren't in there because I don't want to scare anybody. Now this footage isn't the greatest because I literally just have to stick my camera in there and I have no idea where it's aiming. So it's a little bit tricky to get a good angle, but you can clearly see we've got three and they will turn a beautiful blue color later on or at least appear blue. You know, they say there's really no such thing as a bluebird. Did y'all know that? <laughs> it's all about the appearance and the way the light reflects on it. Okay, let's go check out this house too. Now, this one is the tree swallow. I have never checked on a tree swallow nest before. You can't see it, but one of the parrots is actually flying around. Okay, so this is really interesting. This is a very shallow nest. It's not near as deep. And it's got a lot of feathers in it. Now, this is actually a sideways angle, but I had to turn it just so that it would fit for video purposes. But you can see they look like little marbles. And actually, they almost look like just large jelly beans. They were very small compared to what you see on the camera here. Now, this is in my green stock. Y'all, a couple days ago in the last video, I was showing you the beginnings of a wren's nest inside one of the tiers of my green stocks. But y'all, I missed this one. This was in the tier above it, and I didn't even see it because there wasn't as much straw laying around the edges. So not only did we have that other one that had been started, we had this one that was already done. All right, let's move on to the special guest visiting the farmstead. Look who we've got here, you guys. This is a long-haired chihuahua. It might look a little different than some you've seen before, but this is my brother's dog. So this is Toby. And the reason that he's here is because my brother and his family are going to have to be gone for six weeks on a trip. And we certainly don't want Toby to be lonely or scared or feel isolated and get depressed. So I'm going to watch him. Now, I have not gotten to bond with him yet because even though I've been to their house and I've seen him a couple times, he didn't come to me. Um, you know, it's his territory. It was a little bit different. But also, you guys know I don't travel much. I have everything delivered um, because of my lymphedema. Very hard for me to drive, so I don't get out a whole lot. Dad does a lot of my shopping, like for Costco. We talked about that in the last video, or garden stuff. Um, and we just FaceTime. 
So John brought him over so we could do an introduction. And I didn't get all of that recorded because I was kind of too involved in that. But what we did was we let one of my dogs out at a time, let them sniff. We kind of held Toby so that he would feel not so scared. He's an only dog. So this is overwhelming. I have 11 dogs and they're all getting to know him. And none of them are being aggressive at all. They're just wanting to sniff and be around him. So we did it really slow. He was actually here for a total of two hours. You can see on George, I have a harness uh, because sometimes he gets a little bit crazy with an intro. That's just his past history. He's not mean, but he lets them know that he's kind of the boss. And so we kept Toby on the leash. We'd pick him up when he seemed overwhelmed. And then now he has graduated to walking around without his leash, feeling good, not jumping on me or John anymore to be held. He's actually been marking his territory, which is a great sign. And other than being annoyed with so many dogs sniffing him constantly, <laughs> he's done really well. And I told you guys in the last video, I'm super empathetic. So all I could think about was, oh my gosh, what if I was Toby? With all of these dogs sniffing me nonstop, some of them are like, you know, 20 times my size, but he just did fantastic. So John's going to bring Toby back a few more times and we'll have some hour long play dates just so that he can stay used to the pack and feel like he's one of them or at least start getting that way. And then that way it'll be a much smoother transition when they're gone for six weeks. He is absolutely precious. I was so proud of him. He's such a big boy and he really did well. And we alternated. I picked him up several times as well, just so that he would know that I had his back and that I was a safe space as well. Well, he's feeling frisky now. Good boy, Toby. You're alerting us to things like my dog's under the tree. If you guys watched it, there was one point when I was looking at the humbutter that I said, well, that looks a little bit sketchy. And as I started looking closer, I found leaf miners. Now, typically they like specific types of things, but I actually found them. All right, Rubas. I actually found them in the spinach, the bok choy, the kale, the collards, and on my wildflowers. So what I've done is I've already gone through and picked a ton of things off. I probably lost three fourths of my baby greens, little microgreens. But one thing that you are definitely supposed to do with leaf miners is start picking, get those greens off. Now, everything that I've read says that the leaf miners don't usually destroy the plant. They're just unsightly. However, I did read that they can destroy the plant. And if you ask me the fact that I had to pick off every leaf, on some of my kale and collard plants, it's not destroying, but it's taking a huge portion of my harvest. So it's critical to get those off of there. Now I read a lot of things like you can use row covers and things like that. But the problem with the row covers is that if they've already laid eggs, then those are still gonna be in there. You cannot prevent that. They're already on the plant. <laughs> but if you get the row covers on from the very beginning, 
you can hopefully prevent some of the adults from laying the eggs on the leaves. But the problem is, is that these leaf miners actually overwinter in the soil. And then when the plants come up in the spring, that's when they burrow into the leaves and they start eating in between the top and the bottom layer of the leaves. So I've never had these before. This is a first for me, but obviously they were hanging out in these green stock tiers over the winter and just waiting for springtime. I did read some articles that talked about using pesticides and things like that. I'm not gonna do that. If you guys have watched my other videos, you know I try to stay organic for health reasons because I have lymphedema and I can't process chemicals and toxins very well and things like that. They make me super sick. They can actually be life-threatening for me. So I am gonna use neem oil. It's organic. I've had it sitting on the shelf for a while. I've never used it, but I've always had it just in case. So I'm gonna actually break that out and use it. And then when it comes time to eat these greens, I'm just gonna rinse them off. Now, one thing I just wanted to mention, my daughter quickly reminded me that my son-in-law had a reaction to the neem oil on his skin. So as he was spraying their plants, he got it on his hands and arms and he had a reaction to it. So you guys just be careful. I'm gonna wear some gloves. And so hopefully it's not gonna bother me at all. It is a bit breezy today, so I'm gonna be careful but I'm just gonna do as much as I can. And I'm probably gonna go ahead and spray some of the plants that I don't see any leaf miners on just to be on the safe side. Now I'm hoping that some of the good news for me is that I'm growing things in grow bags, these green stalks, and I've got some stuff in the railing planters on the front porch. So at least they're not all in the same area. And I'm hoping that this helps and that the leaf miners aren't in every single plant that I've got already. You guys know I like to research. I like to bring whatever I'm learning to you so that in case somebody else comes across it, it's gonna help you too. So I'm gonna show you what they look like and then I'm just gonna get started spraying. All right, let me give you a quick rundown of neem oil. So this is for organic gardening. It can be used up to the day of harvest. It controls black spot, powdery mildew, rust, spider mites, aphids, white flies, and other insect pests. Um, you can use it on roses, flowers, house plants, trees, shrubs, fruits, nuts, and vegetables. It's a multi-purpose fungicide, insecticide. It's a three-in-one product. It kills eggs, the larval stage, the adult stages of insects, and it prevents fungal attack of plant tissues. Now, I already pulled these off with a vengeance. I went around all the tiers, pulled as much as I could, and y'all, it was even on the tiniest baby leaves. But I found a few that I missed, and so I'm just giving you a look at what these leaf miners look like so you'll be able to identify it on yours as well. Y'all, these are my dad's and they are way too big. Look at this. Is that just an illusion? It almost looks as big as my head. Anyway, they are huge. Hopefully I can even handle this bottle. Now, hopefully I don't need to be wearing a mask for this, y'all, because I have asthma. It's not too windy right now. I know technically you're probably supposed to spray on the back side of every leaf too, but the bok choy is kind of standing straight up. So that, look at my glove, kind of standing straight up. Can y'all even take me seriously while I'm talking with this big old thing on? But anyway, it's standing, let me hide it. It's standing straight up. And so I don't know if I can actually get behind and on top and all that kind of stuff. I'm just gonna do the best I can. I figure trying to do anything is better than nothing. I will admit this kind of gives me the creeps because I'm so organic and I don't put anything on my food. I don't eat anything that's got a bunch of toxic stuff on it. And so even when it's organic and it's supposed to be okay, still gives me the heebie-jeebies. I'm gonna definitely be rinsing this stuff off before I eat it. I feel like I can't breathe. I probably should have put a mask on. Now, technically, I can't really smell it, but there's something about being a nurse and having asthma that's a bad combination. And when you spray stuff, you feel like you should be wearing a mask, just in case.
Y'all, I know a lot of people use neem oil for a lot of different things. Y'all put some stuff in the comments about what your experience has been with neem oil. All right, you guys, stay vigilant. We gotta stay on top of those pests and keep our eyes open. I never thought that I would have these kind of issues because so far it has been smooth sailing, but you never know what's gonna happen. This is why it's so important to walk your garden daily, no matter how small or how big it is. All right, thanks for joining me today. I'll see you guys real soon in the next video. And until then, y'all have a great couple of days. Bye-bye.